Olivia Mobley for the women's ice hockey team has been on fire this season with nine points in her back pocket already. The men's ice hockey faces off against number three team North Dakota this weekend, and we will give you an in-depth look at the women's mid-MAC report. All this and more on Bobcat Breakdown, starting right now. Welcome to Studio 125. I'm your host, Benjamin Rikovicius. Alongside me are two very passionate gentlemen, women's ice hockey beat reporter Clever Streich and Nick Antoniadis. How are you feeling, guys? Well, Clever, it's kind of funny because we're both producers for our own show in Sports Pause, and now we're against each other on Bobcat Breakdown, so let's have a good show today. Yeah, tonight's going to be a pause power struggle. I'm excited. Let's get it started, Nick. Sounds good. Awesome. Let's get into it. This past Sunday, the men's ice hockey team faced off against Long Island University, forcing them to go into overtime with a hot start to their season and their recent win versus Boston College. What went wrong for the Bobcats to end up in overtime? Clever, our hockey guy. Let's start with you on this one. Yeah, thanks, Ben. So uh, the Bobcats end up tying the LIU Sharks. It's a 2-2 finish. They win a shootout, but that one doesn't count. So in the third period, they were up 2-0. They couldn't shut the door, and this was the biggest issue. This is why they ended up falling to the LIU Sharks. They couldn't shut the door because they allowed them back in the game. LIU is an unranked team, and Quinnipiac just completely underestimated the powers that LIU could have. They beat them dominantly twice last year, a 4-1 victory on December 10th of 2021, and then the next day a 5-0 victory. But this year, the Bobcats came into this matchup thinking, oh, this is an easy win after we took down Boston College, and they just got blindsided by LIU. Yeah, I have to agree with you. They were just not prepared to play a full 60-minute game. Everything just seemed a little bit a little bit messy for this ice hockey team. I mean, we start with the defense. They started to lack later on in the game. They had a 2-0 um, lead in uh, against LIU, and then they get a turnover, they scored. They had a breakaway, they scored. And then just like that, th it's a tie game. They just started falling apart. And also, the puck possession that this uh, men's ice hockey team, it was just bad. It just didn't look good overall. They just looked sloppy all around. And you could say that they had a pretty good game because they outshot LIU, but let's not forget, those shots that they took were unnecessary shots. So overall, this game was just not a men's ice hockey game because they should have been LIU and it's going to mess them up over the weekend. Right, so Vinny Papura, a great goaltender, he ends up going the distance also with number seven Northeastern. So LIU, there's this program that didn't exist two years ago, and somehow they're pushing a top 10 team in the Bobcats to an overtime and then a shootout. The LIU athletic website, website just said giant tamers. LIU is putting fear into the nation's top teams. That says as much volumes about the Bobcats team right now. Those are some awesome takes, guys. So sticking with men's hockey, the team currently sits at number eight on the polls. This number dropped this past weekend due to their recent game versus Long Island University. The Bobcats are set to face the number three team in the country, North Dakota, this upcoming weekend. Nick, what are your predictions for this upcoming series versus North Dakota? So you might, you might disagree with me on this, Clever, but I'm actually going to say that they're actually going to tie this series at North Dakota. I know that last season they did tie it, but it's going to be a little bit different because they had the home field advantage last year, and that basically showed that Yanni Peretz became Yanni Peretz that game. It's going to be a tough matchup because it's the number three North Dakota team, but it's going to also be a little bit difficult for the Bobcats because they do not have a top scorer. Because this year, they do not have Wyatt Bongiovanni, they do not have Oliver Chow, and they don't have Ty Smolenic. They need to find other people to find ways to score. They can't just have Ethan DeYoung score co like constantly for every game. They need to possibly have... Colin Graff, who scored against LIU. Maybe Michael Labari can be the leader for their team. And even Zach Metza, be the captain that he is to show up in this series against North Dakota. But 
I have to say they're going to tie the series, but it's going to be a very difficult matchup. Yeah, my confidence is kind of wavering in this team right now after they just tied LIU. I'm going to say that they're probably going to drop both of these games. They maybe have a chance to tie or push to overtime, but North Dakota's really good this year. They're the number three team in the country. They have 12 NHL prospects, a really good first-year class, uh, surrounded with Dylan James, a second-round pick of the Detroit Red Wings, a 2021 fourth-rounder and Jackson Blake, uh, Jackson Blake excuse me, from the Carolina Hurricanes. They lost Jake Sanderson, who went to the the Ottawa Senators. We was a top five pick in 2020 and the shaky goaltending could be the underlying factor, but I just can't see them after this LIU game going into this upcoming weekend in North Dakota. They have a really raucous crowd in North Dakota they're going to have to deal with. It's going to be rough for them, and this is the make-or-break moment. They lose both these games, I think that they drop out of the top 10. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I was, I was actually going to mention that if they do end up getting winless, there's, it could possibly make it or break it for the season, but I think that they're going to make the mistakes that they did during against LIU, excuse me, against this series against North Dakota, fix up this defense, and at least get one win into this The series. question is the evidence there for them to go beyond this. I mean, it should be because they've been through this, so like, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we know for sure it's going to be a tough weekend. Sticking on the ice, but switching locker rooms, the women's ice hockey team is currently 6-0, and zero, with 13 goals scored in the last two games. This doesn't happen by mistake. Clever, is it the offense or the defense that is allowing them to have so much success to the start of the season? Yeah, it's a mix of both, but I'd have to say the offense is definitely being the carrying factor of this team. The power play is up by twenty, up to 29% conversion rate. There were three power play goals out of five attempts in the last game alone in their 7-1 win against St. Anselm. Seven different goal scorers in that game, too. I talked to Cass Turner this past weekend at the press conference. She said that the strongest part of her lineup this year is the depth. There is 10 different goal scorers that have put up at least one goal on this team this year. We're seeing different names on the score sheet, both young and old in the program. Shea Maloney, a grad transfer, she gets a hat trick against St. Anselm. And as well, we see uh, Madison Chandler, the first year, getting a hat trick against the then number 15 Boston College Eagles. So I have to say it's the offense that is driving forward this team this year. Clever, did you look at my notes? Because that is exactly what I have on this Bobcats team. It was offense hands down. Like you said before, there was seven power play goals so far. That is huge because last season, that was the one thing that was very difficult about this Bobcats team. They could not score on the power play. They had a couple of attempts. They couldn't even shoot the puck. But this season, they feel aggressive. Um, excuse me. They feel aggressive while during the power play. They are known as a defending team. Like they have top defenders such as Matty Samuskevich and Kendall Cooper. So it's huge for this team to have this offense. And like you said, multiple players scored during these two games against San Aslam. We have Nina Steigoff, Alexa Hoskin, Sadie Peer, and also Lexi Agia. That's huge for that team. It's not just one goal scorer for that team. It's multiple players. And it's like everybody. Everybody's yeah, scoring. That, Pucks are just flying into the back of the net. It's half off yeah. sale. That's why I love about Cass Turner's playing style. It's just fantastic for this team and it's going to help them along the way especially the game against Harvard. They got a lot of firepower this year. Yeah. Well I'm glad all three of us agree about the offense. With Evan Mobley dominating the ice this season she has scored nine points so far. Flashback to this time last year she only had six points. Could Mobley break her personal record that was set last year? Nick let's start with you. I am going to say that she will break her score point from last season. Last year she ended up having 34 points in her season with 17 goals and 17 assists, which equivalent to 34 points in her season last year. I'm gonna say that her playing style is gonna be a little bit different this year because she now has goal scorers on her team. So she's gonna be more of like a playmaker, less of a scorer. She's gonna have more assists into the season and she's gonna find more options to pass to. I mean, like I said, we have the 17 year old first year of Madison Chandler who has been amazing so far. Lexi Agia, who's on a tear. Sadie Peer has been awesome. She has options to pass. She has pa options, excuse me, to pass to. So she doesn't have to be the top scorer for this team. She just needs to be the playmaker, and that's the only way that she's, this team is going to win so far. Yes, I agree with you. Olivia Mobley's right now fourth place in the NCAA in assists, fifth in the NCAA in points, 
the only people above her are people from Wisconsin. We know Wisconsin's a powerhouse of women's ice hockey in the NCAA. Mobley is a leader both on and off the ice, and she sets up her teammates. That's what I really love about Olivia Mobley's play. She can find those areas of the ice we see right there. She got a fantastic pass. Th this is just what Olivia Mobley does. She is the former Miss Minnesota hockey player. Um, she's been one of the best Bobcats all across her three years, but this feels like the biggest year that she's had so far. She's off to an incredible pace. I think that she could break 40 points easily, maybe even oh, yeah. push 50. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree with that. You're not going to like this comparison, but I can see her as a little bit of a Matt Barzell. Doesn't focus on the shooting, doesn't focus on the goals. Just hear me out, hear me out. Doesn't focus on scoring the goal, but he finds the right players. And that's exactly what Olivia Mobley does. So far we've seen this season. She has been the playmaker for this team. She has been amazing and it helps Cass Turner and her team to go forward and it's going to help her alongside. Replace Barzell with Panarin and we'll talk. No, 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 no. Okay. Forget about that. No. Well, guys, there's been a lot of agreement here in the first half. So it's time to take our first break of the night, but don't go anywhere as all things men's and women's hockey, or excuse me, soccer will be discussed and analyzed. See you in exactly two minutes. After Shelter Pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Meet the scam. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the song. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Welcome back. Leaving the MNT arena, let's head to the soccer field. Senioritis doesn't seem to be in the air for Tomas Fekula, as he appears, appears to be back on season form. What has been the biggest reason for his success so far? Clever, what are your thoughts? Tomas Fekula has stepped up in a moment where Brog Asin is on the sidelines. And that's really the experience and growth that he's had throughout his four years with the Bobcats. This is his first time, as you see on the graphic, scoring over three goals in one season since his first year. He has already outdone his junior year performance. He has four goals and three assists for 11 points in all the games that he's played so far. He's on a great run. They just defeated Marist this past weekend. And that's the MAC Conference champions. This team didn't even make the MAC tournament last year. And they end up coming in and defeating the Marist Red Foxes in a downpour with Svekula scoring a key goal in that. So I think that it's all about Svekula stepping up. He also has a lot of involvement on the PKs. He's two for two on those penalty kicks. So DaCosta sees Fakula and knows that he's in a critical role at a critical time. Yeah, I 100% agree with you with that. I think that once Brog Austin started to get, um, got that injury, that was when he started to step up. That was a humongous uh, part of how he has been just a top player for this team right now. He has just made a great impact for this team, and you just see him and David Bersedo 
basically being the top players for this Bobcats team. And like you said before, he's past the three goal mark and he's going to be passing the double digit marks of, of the points, excuse me, uh, since his first year. It's going to be an extremely dangerous team going forward when Austin comes back. And then you have Spakula, who has been on a tear right now. And then Bersedo, who's been absolutely amazing for this team. It's going to be exciting, especially with Mar especially being Maris. That's huge for this Bobcats team. So switching benches now, the women's soccer team is approaching the end of their season with five games left in the MAC schedule. Nick, what will their record in be in the MAC heading into the postseason? Clever, you're going to think this is a bold prediction, but I'm going undefeated. Oh wow! They are going to oh, they're wow. going to just hear me out on this. So Ugh. the next five games left for this Bobcats team is teams that are below 500 in the MAC and also 500 overall. That is Ryder, Iona, Manhattan, St. Peter's, and St. Mary's. All five of those teams are below 500 in the MAC and below 500 overall. Just overall, the Bobcats should just straight up beat all those teams. And like I said in the first show of the year, I mentioned that the Quinnipiac Bobcats are going to be the favorites in the MAC, and I still believe that because right now they're undefeated in the MAC and they're going to stay undefeated in the MAC with these five games coming up. Okay, even Superman can take a bullet from time to time. Even okay, he has whatever. his kryptonite. Okay, Introducing whatever, the Iona Gales, I think that this is kind of an outside force that could deliver a rare MAC loss to this women's soccer team. They look unstoppable. I definitely agree. Yeah. They'll go four and one. But there has to be some sort of give at some point. The only loss that this team has taken this year was on the road against Yale. However, there's two really great players that Iona has. They're fifth in the table right now, so they're the top of these um, five teams that they have to play. Ryder in sixth, Manhattan tenth, St. Peter seventh, and the Mount is in ninth. But Emma Havrilla is having a solid season, a 104 GAA and a 742 record. And uh, Kadara Lewis has been tied in the third for Mac with three goals. So I think that Iona could be the only team to hand Quinnipiac a loss in the next five games because the Bobcats haven't beaten the Gales since 2018, so that could be the silver lining that could take down that undefeated MAC title. Okay, I just have a quick question for you. How in the world do you think they're going to stop Rebecca Cook and Sophia Lospinoso, who have been on a tear this season, and the main reason why they have been undefeated in the MAC? I just think it's a little bold to say that they're going to win all five games without there being some sort of slip-up. I told Every you it was a bold great team yeah, I told even you it was has their down team, days. Yeah. I think that they're going to take at least one loss. Nah. Well, I'm going to agree with Clev on this one. I think they take one loss. Are you kidding me? <laughs> with strong players hitting the field, like Rebecca Cook, who is averaging one goal per game, one person cannot win a championship alone. Who has to step up for the Bobcat, Bobcats to propel themselves into the postseason? I'll say Markella Um okay. She has been somebody that was a former All-Max second team selection. One goal in eight games, however, does not match the pace that she set last year where she had five goals and four assists. She's a big part of this team. She's a senior. She's a leader. She's somebody that is playing her role in the midfield. She's doing a really good job on the defensive side of the ball. It's just when Cook and Chokel are not producing, you need those secondary options. Alves can't be the only person that's stepping up and scoring. You need people like Boleri, who was an all-max second team selection, to play her role as a senior and upperclassman and lead the team. Yeah, I like that answer, but I'm actually going to go with Paige LaBurge for this hmm. one. So... I know that any time they mention Paige LaBurge, they mention the conversation of Rebecca Cook and Courtney Chokel. But if you look, as you see in the stats right here, she only has two goals in the season. If you keep mentioning LaBurge, she should be more, she should step up more. She has been extremely quiet all season long, and she needs to step up for this team. Like I said before, these next five games are going to be huge for this Bobcats team because if she can step up, at the right time, she is going to be prepared for the MAC championship, but she needs to step up because there's going to find, there's going to be opportunities where they're going to find ways to stop Courtney Choco. I don't know if they're going to stop Rebecca Cook, mm -hmm. but they need to find way they need to find ways for Paige Burge to be there. Yep, because women's soccer is great, but they don't have the depth that other teams in the NCAA yeah. do. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of options on this team. We'll just have to see who steps steps up. The field hockey team is set to face Georgetown this Friday, who are both 0-4 and four in the conference. Will the Bobcats be able to bounce back? Nick, let's start with you. Okay, so I'm going to say it's not going to change much. Because, look, both teams are winless in their conference. And if the Bobcats do, however, 
beat Georgetown, I don't think it's going to do much. That's it's two bad teams going up against each other. It's like saying, you know, the Cincinnati Reds up against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Cincinnati Reds beat the Pirates. Are you going to call them a good team now? No, they're, stu- they're still both bad teams. It has been a disappointing season overall for this field hockey team. After a great beginning, they beat the nationally ranked Mar- um, Ma- uh, Maine, excuse me, and they were on a three-game winning streak. And I did say that they were going to have a winning season in the first show. I do have to say my prediction did fail. I mean, everything has been going wrong for this field hockey team. The defense is not there. Christina Torres can't do it all, but there has been upside. You know, Amelia, Amelia Mazzarelli has been stepping up. Stella Tipmeyer is having a career year. And also, Rachel Papernick has been stepping up for this team. But overall, if they do win this game, I don't think anything's going to happen much. It's not going to do much for this team. Nick and Tony Giannis, I could not disagree with you more. <laughs> yes, Georgetown Whatever. is another team that's 0-4 in the field hockey conference right now. The Big East is a tough conference. The same four teams run the table every single year. UConn, Temple, Liberty, and um, Old Dominion. These are the teams that are always in the Big East tournament. But the Bobcats have received scoring in the right places, and they just played a really solid stretch. The first 48 minutes of their game against number 9 St. Joseph's, they were tied with them at half. I think that this team is turning the corner, and you just have to be patient because the talent is there. And there is still a chance for them to finish above 500 this year. Fairfield, Georgetown, Villanova, Providence, Sacred Heart. Those are some of the play- the teams that they'll face for the rest of this slate. They've gotten through the thick of the woods against these nationally ranked teams. Yes, they lost to Liberty and UConn and St. Joseph's, but they've taken those lessons into the last part of their schedule, and they're going to be able to bounce back. And this will still be such an improvement after a 3-12 and 2021 season. So you're saying that they're going to be a 500 team, and they're coming Currently in a six-game losing streak, so... I think that they'll bounce back and they'll win at least some of those games, maybe finish at 500. I mean, they've been saying that all season long. They're going to bounce back, they're going to bounce back, and then they end up losing badly against teams. I mean, they lost to St. Joseph's. I know that was a close game, but they still lost by three goals. I mean... There's no hope for this. And Georgetown's been blown out 10 nothing by Liberty. It doesn't mean much that the Georgetown Hoyas come into this game 0-4. They're both at rock bottom, but Quinnipiac's going to but be the one to but, rise like a phoenix but from that's the ashes what I'm sooner rather than later. No, but that's what I'm saying. You're really going to think that this is, a good, this is going to be a good matchup for Quinnipiac? They're going to win this game? Sure, it's the 7 versus 8. I'm not win. done. I'm, I'm still going. Like, literally. Like... They only, like, if they win this game, it's not going to mean much. <laughs> it will mean something. It's going to mean the breaking of a losing streak and maybe a chance to go above 500. Right, whatever. Again. That's where well, I disagree. Well, Clever, I love your enthusiasm. I think I got to side with Nick on this Let's one. Go. They're just yeah. looking a That's little right. tired. That's All right. right. But it's time to take our last break of the night. When we return, we'll have the QBSN Game of the Week and, of course, our final roars. We'll be right back. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all good, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? 
Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed. And for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back. It's time to look at the QBSN Game of the Week. The men's ice hockey team go into the season opener on the road against Boston College. After winning both preseason matchups against Toronto and Providence, it didn't take long for the Bobcats to strike in this one. Zach Metza wins the faceoff and fires that one into the goal for a one to nothing lead. In the second, college, Boston College almost ties this one up on a power play, but Kuntar's shot hits the right post. The Bobcats weren't satisfied with one goal approaching the third period, so Charles Alexis Legault takes matters into his own hands, sneaking one inside the left post in a sea of defenders. Now, into the third, the Bobcats offense opens up with goals from Lombardi and DeYoung. Quinnipiac's goalkeeper, Jan V. Peretz, was strapped in as he locked all 16 goals he faced Friday night. Quinnipiac finished the night with 29 to 16 advantages and shots to goals and held Boston College scoreless on two power plays. The Bobcats defeat the Eagles 4 to nothing in a statement game. Well, it's time for everyone's favorite part of the night, final roars. Clever, let's start with you. It's been an up and down season of evolution for the Quinnipiac field hockey team. A promising start with the Bobcats taking a huge win over a ranked team and amongst other challenging foes and victories. But a six game losing streak in the middle of the slate has tainted the water on the 2022 campaign. Six games remain down the stretch, but I wanted to take a moment to highlight the class of 2022's contribution to this year's run. Nine seniors, one graduate student. They led this squad to their best start since 2018. Head coach Becca Main has described this year's Bobcats as one of the most talented rosters in program history. None of that would be possible without the play of this class, who have helped usher in a new era in Bobcats field hockey. Stella Tittmeyer is having a career year with a team leading 11 points, and the returning Eva Veltors has also stepped up despite missing her sophomore and junior years due to COVID-19. Rachel Papernick is also having a personal revival by scoring deep in the circle in key games, and the lone graduate student, Amanda Fanaro, has been the anchor in the Bobcats' backfield, recording five defensive saves. With the pandemic, this class was dealt a nearly impossible task of trying to rebuild and hand off the baton to a new generation of Bobcats. But as senior day approaches against Penn on October 23rd, I can retrospectively state that this senior class has accomplished all these goals and more, helping solidify the program through this turnaround. The season has changed, laying the foundation both on and off the field for a brighter future for Quinnipiac. Last year's women's ice hockey team was special. Multiple players having over 20 points, two top goalies, and being one goal shy of making an appearance to the Frozen Four. Some people even call it a historic season for this ice hockey team. This season, however, is different. One of their goalies last year in Kareen Schroeder is not part of the team anymore. Taylor House as well is not part of the team, but that doesn't matter for Cass Turner as she went out and recruited big time first years who have stepped up immediately. One of the first years has already made a big splash in her first home game of the season, and that is Madison Chandler. The 17-year-old in her first home game scored a hat trick in the victory over Boston College and immediately made a name for herself. Chandler would end up winning ECAC Rookie of the Week with her performance so far. She has four goals and five points this early on into her first season. Chandler's future at, here at Quinnipiac is bright, and so is this women's ice hockey team as they look back to the, get back to the Frozen Four that they were so close to making last season. Before we sign off for the night, I want to revisit the rank one last time. We all saw Pret's dominance this week, and it's safe to say he will be electric for this Bobcat team. Being a top-tier goalkeeper requires a semi-functional offense, and there are a few candidates who could take some of the load off Peretz. Colin Graff is going to be the driving force of this mission. The sophomore scored his first goal as a Bobcat this past Sunday in the tie to LIU. His patience, accuracy, and offensive IQ is a great fit for the Bobcats. Last year, during his season at Union, he played a total of 37 games, scoring 22 points. 
He tallied 31 assists in the 2019-2020 season and is a proven playmaker with him taking up a step in his game. He will take pressure off upperclassmen like Ethan DeYoung and Michael Lombardi. Look for him to get involved in the next two critical games against number three ranked North Dakota. As we wrap up tonight's program, be sure to stay connected with us online at q30tv.com and on social media at Q30 Sports. Don't forget to download the Q30 television app available in all app stores for our, for our amazing producers and amazing technical staff. I'm Ben, this is Clever, and this is Nick. We'll see you next time on Bobcat Breakdown.